Hello and good morning. It's Phil Thatch and I'm here at the Foster Falls area of South Cumberland State Park. And I'm gonna hike a trail which I think, let me see what it's called. I think it's called the Fiery Gizzard Trail which takes me to Foster Falls. And I'm here right at sunrise, just a little while after sunrise. It's really beautiful here. Uh, kind of cold. I'm wearing two short sleeve t-shirts and a long sleeve t-shirt. Hopefully that's enough. Once I get hiking, I'll probably warm up. But uh, this place is really beautiful and there's supposed to be a, a nice waterfall here called Foster Falls, which I've seen some photographs of, but I've never seen it myself and I'm going today. This trail starts out on a boardwalk, which is kind of neat. No handrails at first, and then right here it gets handrails, you can see back there. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna get to hiking, and maybe I'll find some stuff to make photos of, or maybe I'll uh, just hike. I don't know, we'll see. Well, that didn't take long to find. I mean, I'm two minutes from the car, and there is the waterfall. Apparently, if you hike this trail, you can get more close to the bottom of it. But I believe first I'm gonna set up and take a photo from right here. The tripod that I hike with is, is really a short tripod. And I bought this extension for it. It's all carbon fiber. Um, and I usually I don't need to use that extension, but to get a good angle on the waterfall, I needed to put the extension on, so I'm glad I brought it with me. Um, you know, even, even with the extension fully extended, this tripod is kind of short for a really tall guy like me, but it's a fantastic tripod. And uh, gosh, I've knocked, the, I've knocked the model number off of it. I'll put it on the screen. I learned about this tripod from David Akubian, and now myself, Heather, and my friend Ray Soldano all own this tripod. So there's my composition, pretty straightforward. It's basically the only composition you can get from here. I, I guess you could shoot it vertical but uh, I like the way you can see the, a little bit of white water on the creek above the waterfall, and then you can see the entire waterfall from right here. What a fantastic place. I had no idea that it was this easy to get to a good shot of the waterfall. Now I'm gonna have to take a pretty long hike to probably get a shot that's nowhere near as good. But there's my settings. I'm 1.3 seconds F11, ISO 160, two second timer. and done. I decided to put my circular polarizer on to try to darken up uh, some of the areas where there's reflection. And uh, I made the exact same shot, still 1.3 seconds, but I dropped down to F9 to keep the exposure right because the circular polarizer darkened the scene a little. My F9 shot has just a little bit of blinkies going on when I review it at the top of the falls there. So I made another shot this time at F11 and it still has a tiny bit of blinkies at the top of the falls, but I, I think this is gonna be the one. 1.3 seconds F11 ISO 160 with the circular polarizer. So this is a lesson in don't get in a hurry. You know, if I hadn't taken the time to review that picture and noticed that even though it appeared to be exposed correctly. When I looked at the blinky screen, the top of the waterfall was completely blown out and this shot would have been ruined because a lot of the good part of this photograph is the detail at the top of the waterfall. And seeing as how I darkened it up a little bit and made another shot, the photograph was saved. So take your time and get it right. I went all the way back to the car after I photographed the waterfall to get a jacket. It's a lot colder up here than I thought it was going to be. So I'm glad I had more clothes in the car and I'm glad I uh, realized it before I got too far from the car. Starting over. So here's where I'm at. Right there is where I made the picture from. And you can still, you can see the parking lot barely from here. So I'm going to take this four tenths of a mile hike to the bottom of the waterfall. I ran across another hiker and he went he went that way, but uh, I'm all about the waterfall, so I'm going this way. 
trail starts out really easy and then all of a sudden it hangs a right and it turns into this which uh, it's still not too bad but it's just definitely not like it was up there the trail is really steep kind of kind of hard on my knee but it's so far it's relatively easy to follow I can see the water now down there the pool at the base of the falls at this point the trail changes from a rocky mess and then right here it becomes a, a little cave of Douglas firs there are trailblazes here to reassure you that you're on the right track. Trailblazes everywhere right here. And you can kind of see the waterfall back through the trees there. Oh, and there's a, there's a suspension bridge down there. Awesome. I was wondering how I was gonna get across the creek. Pretty beautiful right here. I'm looking straight up the canyon now and at the top you can see the observation platform where I made my photo and I'm down here now on the suspension bridge. That's beautiful right down through there. I'd love to make a shot of it from here, but I don't know how I'd get the bridge to quit wobbling long enough to make a decent shot. And then over there is the waterfall. Bouncy bridge. It's actually, it's really pretty nice. There's chain link fencing on the bottom. So if you've got youngsters walking across here, you don't have to worry about them falling off the bridge. But if you've got a toddler, that, that climb down the rocky trail, I think might be too much for somebody who'd be a worry to fall off the side of this bridge. The trail comes out over there, but I've kind of come around to the left to try to get to try to get the falls a little bit from the side. I really like it from this angle. And I've got my tripod set up on this rock and the camera way up here. You can kind of see, if the camera will focus, you can kind of see the composition I've been working on. Uh, I'm trying to keep my shutter speed around one second. And as, if you can, I'm not sure if you can see the exposure on the left. It's showing me underexposed by about one and a third stops but I had to do that to uh, keep the waterfall from being overexposed and up at the top of the mountain you can see the sunlight starting to creep in and I don't want that in my shot so I'm having to really hurry I almost stopped and made pictures of the creek over near the suspension bridge but I, I saw that sun coming and I wanted to get the shots here before the sun comes in and messes everything up then later I'll try that I may go around a little further if I can figure out how to get over there a little further and try to get a shot of it even more from the side. I, I really like the, the side angle of the waterfall. I scampered around that way as far as I could get and made a few more photos looking at the waterfall. I didn't take my vlogging camera with me so I wasn't able to document them. It's it was really a hard walk just carrying my camera on the tripod without carrying a second camera. So uh, I think some of those are some of the best. So let's look at those. This first shot was taken kind of where I just made those clips where I had walked around a little bit to the left, but not a long way to the left. And it turned out to make a really nice square crop. I love this one second shot at F13. I thought it turned out really nice. And then on this one, I had walked around much, much further and you can see the second waterfall starting to come in. This is a two shot high dynamic range. I needed to uh, make two exposures so the blue sky is not blown out and there's still some detail in the canyon. But this is my favorite composition. This one that has no blue sky. And gosh, I need to go there sometime after a really great deal of rain the night before so that that second waterfall is really flowing. But I really think this is beautiful and worth the hard hike down that mountain and the even harder one coming back up. Okay, so there's a trail. I've come on back around. There's the 
there's the suspension bridge in the background and further around is where the waterfall is. But there's a trail that runs along the creek here and I'm gonna kind of follow it and see if there's a place where I can get a nice picture of the creek. Although I'm doing a lot of elevation gain right now. I wanna stay down at the creek, not up here. But anyway, I think I might be able to get a pretty picture of this creek. It's really beautiful down here in this canyon. This is the first place I've stopped along the creek. Made some shots that look like that. Let's see if I can figure out my settings. F8, one second ISO 160, circular polarizer. All these shots so far are with the 18 to 55 kit lens. Here is the first creek shot that I'm sharing with you. And this one is kind of zoomed in. It's all the way at 55 millimeters, the maximum of the 18 to 55 I was using. And uh, so there's not a lot of detail about the canyon, but there's a lot of detail up close and you can see the, the moss on the boulders on the left that Heather really likes. I made a couple of shots of this composition. I've, I've actually gone down as far as they'll let you go hiking beside the creek. Uh, they want you to, once you get down to a certain point, they want you to stay on the trail. So I'm uh, going by what they say. But I really like this shot, looking back up, these two fallen trees across the canyon. And you can see the, uh, you can see the, the suspension bridge in the distance. I shot this at uh, F11, one second, ISO 160. And if you look at the bottom right hand of my screen, you can tell I'm using a Fujifilm camera because my battery is dead. But that's okay, because I have three or four more in my bag. I shot this one several times at various settings and it turned out that the F8 shot was the best one with the maximum amount of brightness in the shot without too many blinkies and I really like the way it turned out. That place is so beautiful. I highly recommend that you go sometime. Well, I was thinking wearing my rubber boots was a bad idea, but my next composition I had to trod through the creek just a little bit to get to there. I'm shooting up this way, I'm still closer now to the suspension bridge, and I like this pine tree, this deadfall pine tree that's, I guess it's fallen from over here and come across this way, and it's got a little, little white water area of the creek below it, but in the foreground of my shot, I have this boulder, and someone has done some rock stacking, and I just am not a fan of that in my shot, so I'm going to unstack those rocks and redo my shot from that location. All right, well here is the last shot from the creek. I thought this one turned out really beautiful as well. I love the moss. I love the dark water. I think it's uh, uh, because the rocks are so dark in this creek. Really beautiful and they say in the summertime this area is really crowded but here in the winter I was the only person in the bottom. I think it's more common to see rhododendron uh, when you're along these streams in East Tennessee, but I'm pretty sure this, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is mountain laurel and probably that up there behind my head as well. Well, I'm really glad I did the waterfall photos first and then the creek photos because while I was back that way doing the creek photos, really, really harsh light has now arrived at the waterfall. Uh, which would make the photos really bad. So it was definitely a good call to get here at sunrise uh, for the best light on the waterfall and, uh, and which is just reflected light, soft light, pretty light. And uh, now I think I'm going to try to meander my way back up that rocky trail. Waterfalls over there. And beautiful creek photography opportunities are down there, but only for about the first eighth or sixteenth of a mile. And then they want you to stay away from the from the water and stay on the trail. All right. That is the trail, pretty crazy. Okay, I'm arriving back at the top now. 
I decided not to take any breaks before I started talking to you so you could get an idea of how winded an old fat man can get climbing up that thing. I don't know how far it is. It's, it's not very far distance wise, but I think the elevation gain is probably 300 feet or something. You really go up a lot now. Most of the distance of the trail is here walking along this flat area at the top. There's power lines right up here that cut through here, so it's really easy to walk here. But that, uh, that uh, descent was really hard because I had my rain boots on and they're really uncomfortable going downhill because my toes hit the front of my boots. The ascent, which I just completed, was a lot easier on my feet, but it, uh, it definitely got me breathing hard. So, uh, you know, I, I get a, at my job, I get a day and a half off of work. So I worked a half a day yesterday, came home, then I met up with, Heather and I met up with Ray Soldano and David Sailors, and we did photography. And then, see, I think the light might be better this way though. And then we, uh, you know, that was, that was at night, after dark. Then I got up this morning before sunrise, drove an hour and 20 minutes here, did photography this morning. Now I'm gonna go home and tonight, Heather and I have a live stream. So that's what you call making the most out of a day and a half off. I spoke to some other hikers as I was heading back to the car and they said that the other direction on the trail, I just went, you know, the four tenths of a mile down to the waterfall, but there's a full over a mile loop and they had gone the other direction and were, that takes you up to the top of the waterfall going to the right. And uh, they said it was really beautiful that way, but that will have to wait for another time for me. I am pretty worn out. Got a little bonus segment for you now. I stopped on the way home at my favorite rest stop in the world or that I've ever seen. I stopped on the way home at this rest stop on I-24 that's right in the middle of the Nickajack Reservoir on the Tennessee River and there was a fog over the lake. So I made a couple of photos of it. Uh, panos and otherwise. Hopefully they'll come out. I made several different photographs from this area trying to capture uh, the beauty and it turned out that this six shot panorama was the version that worked the best. I made some panoramas that were wider and I tried to do some single shots but this version was the best. I love that sun in the top left and I love this satellite photograph. The arrow is pointing to where the rest stop is and isn't that amazing? The rest area is on an island in the middle of the Tennessee River. I'm arriving now back at the observation platform where I took my photos this morning. And you should be able to see the waterfall down there. If you like the content, a thumbs up's always appreciated. If you wanna see some more, subscribe, hit the bell. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.